Ah, Hilary. Hey. It's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, too, we've been talking on phone and I kept yeah. asking, do you think Hilary is a guy or a woman? Because I'd never met you and Hilary is a name for both, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I kept thinking, am I going to meet a woman or a guy? But but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm really happy to meet you finally. Nice to meet you too, Sharifa. Yes, and thank you for, you know, being open to mm. talk about the topic that I want to talk about today. My podcast and my practice or what mm. I want to do with my practice is to normalize talking about things that society considers taboo or discussions that are very uncomfortable for people. Mm. And I want to call out unhealthy behavior that has been normalized. Like I want to call it out and go like, look, I know that's been made normal, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop normalizing that. So the reason I brought you here today is because in the past one month, I have had stories of partners who are HIV positive, right? And they, one of them is spreading it on purpose. I have had three stories, similar stories. And I really want to get into it because so many questions that have been coming up that even I don't have answers to. And I needed somebody who knows answers to those questions to help mm -hmm. me learn and everyone who's watching. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy you're here. I would like for you to introduce yourself and then we can get into our Q&A. Uh, thank you so much, Sharifa. Hello, everyone. My name is Noam Anya Hillary, this handsome boy. I'm the handsome man. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I'm a person living with HIV, Wow. but born with it. I didn't get it while or oh. through different stories that people always have. Uh, yeah. And through scene like always people say, yeah. but I was born with it and I've lived with HIV mm. for so many years that I'm still alive. Oh my God. I'm sorry uh, to ask, how old are you? Um, uh, I'm 27. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. Hey, I'm 27. Uh, okay. Look. <laughs> at, at what age did you find out? I found out when I was 12 years. Okay. Uh, that was in uh, my primary six. Wow. That's when I got to know that I was HIV positive. But I, I, I didn't have, I didn't look to be, I didn't look to be like one who had HIV. I lived mm -hmm. a normal life growing wow. up. Uh, being uh, being a second born out of three, yeah. and uh, the first born is HIV negative. The last born is also HIV negative. How did that happen? Miracles. <laughs> because I understand there is a way that they can uh, while the mother is giving birth, they can mm -hmm. there's a way they can cut the transmission and yeah. the child doesn't get it. Did so it happen for so you? So I don't know if my mom was going for antenatals. Oh, uh, so but the first one didn't get it. I don't know where where everything went wrong, but. Oh. I won't say I'm very uncomfortable. Oh, I'm not proud of who I am. You're handsome, uh, so yeah, and you handsome. know, it. yeah. <laughs> and uh, among the three, I think I'm the most exposed person. Wow. From the from her children, so uh, it's a blessing in this guys. Right. But I also embrace that yeah. that I'm living with HIV, and uh, I have a story to tell. Maybe I my know. stories are changing people. That is why you're here. You mm -hmm. are going to change people's lives because yeah, I have yeah. so many people in my Instagram inbox. Like every time I post a story or a Q and A about HIV AIDS, my inbox is on fire, Hillary. True. People are telling me, Sharifa, I got it this way. I got it this way, but I cannot talk about it because I'm so afraid of what society will say. People are going to discriminate me. The first time I thought, like people are struggling and i want them to know that living with hiv is not a death sentence there are people like you who are a living example that look you can live a full healthy life right mm, mm. even with the virus and you have even those that have lived for more than 40 years with hiv i know i have there seen are medical them. practitioners that are living with hiv that have lived with hiv for so many years wow we have uh, people from the church that have also lived with hiv for more than 31 years wow. we have uh, canon gideon biamugisha who just celebrated 31 years living with hiv openly openly yeah wow Okay, that is amazing. Mm. So, okay, I have so many questions. Like, I sent you a list. Like, there are so many, and we have only 30 minutes. But I would like to first get into this Q&A. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can start here. And you tell me what you would do. Or oh, there is a question here that confused me so much that I would like for you to help me explain, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so here it goes. 
uh, dear Sharifa, my husband and I are both HIV positive. I found out after a year. That is one question right there. How can I have HIV for a year and I don't know? You will answer it later, right? Number two, I've been afraid to share with anyone because of the stigma around it. Yeah. That I can understand. I am actually here to end the stigma around HIV. And I took long to start medication because I was in denial. I'm here because my husband sleeps around with so many women who don't even know that he's sick. I have been told it's possible for us to get a different strain of the virus from other people in case they're infected. That's the second question. What does she mean by a different strain? And this could make the situation worse for us. How can I stop him from sleeping around? I feel so helpless. So I would like for us to start here. Mm. Usually I post this question and ask people, what would you do? Mm. And I would like for you to just help me clear this up for us. Number one, how can I have HIV and I don't know for over a year? So with HIV, you have to look at uh, the basic knowledge about HIV. Okay. Uh, so for the person that has just gotten HIV or for this person that has just known about their status, mm. that means uh, the white blood cells or the, what we call the CD4s, mm. the number has been high. Okay. And uh, of course, this person might have been waiting for the symptoms and signs mm. for so that they could maybe gun test. Yeah. And uh, uh, given the fact that these people are in a marriage, yeah. so there is uh, that sense of trust and, and honesty. Security. Yeah. And the security, you know. So why would I test yet? I'm uh, only having right. one partner, and uh, I'm sleeping with only one partner. Yeah. So that sense of security, the trust we are within the marriage, yeah. uh, maybe they couldn't have told that I'm HIV positive. But we keep on telling people, mm. HIV is not seen by the eyes, and you can never trust your partner. Trust yourself, yeah. but never trust your partner. People mm -hmm. have different behavior, much as uh, you people have something that binds you together. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you do not know them very well. Yeah. You do not move with them every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry if uh, they were waiting for the signs and symptoms, but mm -hmm. nowadays HIV is not the other HIV we used to talk about in yeah, school. Yeah, that one was so scary. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're waiting to become thin, yes. uh, skinny, pale, red yeah. lips and everything. Nowadays a person can live with HIV for more than 20 years. And they're healthy. They're healthy because right. when you look at HIV therapy or mm -hmm. what we call the uh, antiretroviral therapy, it is a combination of diet wow. and treatment. Drugs. So I read that, uh, you know, the symptoms are like a flu, mm -hmm. a fever. You know, these are normal things that I could have. And mm. I'm like, ah, it's just a flu. It's just a fever. Mm. And it could go on and on. And I'm thinking, no, it could be just, you know, the normal fever. I keep getting mm -hmm. the normal flu. Mm -hmm. But all this while I have contracted the virus. Yeah. Right. So it makes sense for you to say that, look, you need to always check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. Your life is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I also read that uh, sometimes it can take up to three months. For you to actually know no that is the window period we are it's the window about. period yes, eh? yes ah wow okay so if i slept with somebody who is hiv positive today and i test next month you will not tell right that's if uh that's if uh, we are that's if we are doing a normal test okay from clinics pharmacies uh with but if we are tests. having if we are having a PCR test mm -hmm. within one month they can tell that's if we are having a comprehensive test tell They're me checking. about that so the uh, different tests the different tests are mm -hmm. there is a test whereby we are looking for the anti antibodies okay. hiv antibodies okay uh these are and the antigens of course but we are most uh, most uh, looking for the uh, antigens yeah. the antigens and the antibodies these are should I say uh, they are more like soldiers okay. of, on the front line? Yeah. So in case I go, I slept with someone that is HIV positive, yes. and uh, I, 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 within one month I had not tested. Yes. Oh, I didn't take any uh, preventive uh, drug, okay. which we shall talk about later. Right. Uh, then this body, the HIV. Remember, it takes around three days. Those are 72 hours to yes. stick in someone's body. So now the HIV will enter through uh, into someone's body okay. through the blood because it wants where blood is. Yeah. And it will attack the red blood cells and the white blood cells, of course. All right. So it will, uh, since we have the white blood cells that are in the body yeah. and they are meant to fight. And this virus we are talking about, it mutates. It mutates. It's more those that have watched X-Men and everyone. <laughs> 
That's <laughs> a good example. <laughs> yeah, just I'm giving an example. No, 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 what? what? The mutant. Yeah. The, the, the virus is a mutant. Right. Of course, it will have to uh to resemble. Mm. It will pick out uh, the resemblance of the white blood cell, and it wow. will also form its own. So as it is, uh, it is multiplying within your body. Mm. The white blood cells are being eaten up. Mm. So it enters, in, it enters into uh, the white blood, uh, the white blood cells. Yeah. Then uh, it gets the DNA. Yes. And now it also has its own. That's how we get the virus, and you know it sticks within the body. Yes. And when you look at that, uh, most times it takes around three months wow. just to see that you know someone is HIV positive. So that is the window period. Now that is the window period. Okay. So I'm not saying we need to have, we need, we are waiting for it to multiply more, more and more. Mm-hmm. There are some machines with, uh, in good hospitals mm-hmm. whereby even in, uh, in one month mm-hmm. they can test you and uh, comprehensively and get to know that you're HIV positive. But within our system, the healthcare system we have in Uganda, most people run to clinics and the clinic might tell you HIV negative today and you wait for another two months or and three is Sometimes you wait for a full year to test again. And by the time you test now, the virus has already grown in your I body. Know. So growing and, you know. You see many of us these days are relying on the home test kits. Mm-hmm. How accurate are those? Of course, these are screening kits. Okay. These are screening kits. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, when they give you the screening kits or the oral quick, oral quick yeah. they always tell you that... After that, they, uh, sometimes the results are conclusive or not. Yeah. But still, it is very wise for a person to go for a confirmatory test then That's after, true. so that you get to know uh, what the uh, what, what to interpret what the oral quick or the the oral test meant. And that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now I need to understand what the lady meant by a different strain. She is worried that if the husband keeps sleeping around, he might bring a different strain that would make things worse for both of them. What does that mean? Now, Sharifa, with with HIV, HIV is very broad. Okay. And uh, of course, people need a very they, they need lessons about HIV, Correct. continuous lessons about Correct. HIV. Yeah. Because it is a very broad uh, topic to yeah. talk about in only thirty minutes. Yes. So, uh, with strains, we are mm-hmm. talking about. Of course, HIV is a general term. Yes. This is a virus. Yes. But as I've told you, this virus mutates. Yeah. So what I have might not be the one he has. Yeah. What I have might not be the one she has, wow. and of course we are had, we are we are not having the same medicine that treats uh, or that we are having that uh, is reducing the HIV in the body. I we have different that. regimens with different types of medicines. Of course, we have those that uh, uh, those that we have those that we have in common yeah. but now there's a deal breaker yeah. there's a deal breaker within the last you know it's a combination of always three three medications and uh, of course so within the strains there are more like types mm. the energy this is uh we are looking at uh, hiv with its energy okay we are looking at hiv with uh with how it deals in someone's body. Okay. Now we now have to look at uh, the blood group now. How does it react in my blood? So what if... That's a lot. So I might get a strain yeah. that is way stronger than yours. Okay. So, and if I got that strain and I infected, mm. of course we are talking about HIV, but now we are talking about strains yes. now. So if I got HIV, uh, if I'm HIV positive and I married someone that is HIV positive, mm. and both of us are not taking medicine, okay. we have another term that we call reinfection. Okay. This is what she's talking about, the mm. reinfection. Mm. So uh, already the, the strains we have are very resistant to medicine. Yes. Why? Because we've not been taking the medicine. Okay. And we have high chances of spreading to each other the virus. Yeah. My virus, mm. I might get, uh, I have high chances of spreading my virus to you. And that means uh, that you have now to adopt to my new virus. To your my new virus. And that means the medicine you are taking for the other strain, mm. you have to be changed, you have to be switched to another okay. now regimen. And with HIV, the more you keep on changing medicines, mm. the more you keep on changing regimens, your chances of living mm. are, are, are getting lower. That's, <laughs> that, that's with HIV. The more you keep on changing regimens, the more you keep on taking, uh, changing medicine, switching to medicine A, medicine B, yeah. we, get, uh, we get at a time where the doctors say, 
uh, you know, uh, now your chances of having drugs are limited. Because oh, really? they, they, they have tried every drug. Yeah. And every drug has now had, uh, had a drug reaction. Mm-hmm. And when they have yeah. a drug reaction, that means if it is negative and it is not responsive, mm-hmm. that means you have to be switched to another medicine. And uh, the medicine we have on market, these are limited medicines. Oh my God. Okay. Now, I know it might sound like a, a rhetorical question or a cliche question, but how do people get HIV? Or before we even get there, I, from my research that I did, HIV is the virus, mm-hmm. and then AIDS is also something different. Yeah, it's Correct. a combination of diseases that result from uh, HIV becoming uh, resistant to the medicine. Then that is how AIDS now comes to. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is it possible for me to treat HIV and it doesn't result into AIDS? Yeah. You're serious? Mm-hmm. Not cure. Yeah, not you're cure, t- but treating. I can treat it. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's 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 very clear. Okay. Now, how do people get HIV? I know many of us have been told that uh, through penetrative sex, obviously, without protection. Mm, without protection. Yeah. Then there is a mother to child transmission yeah, during birth. Yeah. Yeah. And then there is. Um, okay, that was your question. I don't want to say things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was I was doing a lot of research, and it was it was too much. Of course, there is the blood bit. Mm-hmm semen obviously so the fluids mm, mostly the fluid, yeah. yeah it is that but then there is uh there there are questions about can you get hiv from kissing uh that's if we have both of us have open wounds okay and still i'm um, re-emphasizing that uh when you talk about saliva to saliva mm. it is very impossible for us to get unless we have you take a, a, a five liter jerry can <laughs> of my saliva that is a lot of saliva and of which you cannot <laughs> How do you know? Uh, yeah. There's some people who kiss for that long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, for, to, to, to get a five liter, uh, five liter jug. Okay, that's a lot of saliva. Okay, I can understand that. your point. I can uh, understand but, your uh, point. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about blood, yeah. this is uh, like I said, or like I explained earlier on that mm. HIV loves uh, blood and it loves warmth. Okay. So that's why when we get HIV mm. and uh, my blood is there outside mm. and it's very cold, mm. HIV dies because the, the, the virus dies. Oh wow! Because it's not active in blood or warmth. Okay. So uh, now from the EMT city, yeah. yes, we are talking about mother to child transmission, but still, mm. we have elimination of mother to child transmission, which is a prevention. Yeah. That How do me- they do that? That means uh, the mother, mm. the mother of the baby while pregnant, mm. they have to be adhering to their medicine. Mm. So when they are adhering to their medicine, that means the virus is undetectable in their body. Okay. Now I'm bringing in a new term, undetectable. Undetectable. I, I'm, I'm a bit familiar <laughs> with it. I just don't know for how long I'm supposed to take that antiretroviral medication uh, for me to become undetectable. Uh, uh, the equation is very simple. Mm. If the medicine given to you it means two times two, mm. then you should take your medicine two times two a day okay. within the same time. Right. The right dose. Okay. Uh, you should be the right person to take the medicine. Okay. Of course, uh, you should follow the prescriptions right. every day, every yeah. day, every day. So this medicine works mm. that when you take your medicine every time, mm. your closing gets for this virus to uh, uh, to, to multiply. Grow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when, tima- when when you, when 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 you close the doors, mm. that means by the time you're supposed to take your medicine, mm. it is also waiting for you not to take your medicine. When sure. you do not, by the time you take your medicine, it has already reproduced other copies, very many copies. Oh my god! And uh, when you look at its multiplying uh, a, a time or mm. speed, mm. it can produce as many copies uh, as it can in in seconds. Oh my god! So. You have to take your medicine within the uh, given time, the total time, and uh, the virus, of course, mm-hmm. now it will start hiding away from the blood mm-hmm. and it will be hiding uh, into, uh, it loves hiding somewhere that you know uh, there is warmth. Yeah. I'm not saying that when you take your medicine and you're undetectable, you're HIV negative. Right. No, that actually that has it to be still cleared out. Yeah, it is still there, but waiting for you to... Uh, to to, yeah, no, 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 no cheating. No, 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 no,
you know when someone is undetectable, you won't know they have HIV, right? Because the mm. symptoms are not there. Because you are always asking, but what are the what are the common symptoms? How would you know? And I've come to learn that symptoms of HIV vary, right? Depending on the individual and the stage of HIV that you're in, mm -hmm. right? So if it's in the beginning stage, it doesn't have unique symptoms. That one we've already cleared that out. Actually, HIV has no symptoms. My, that is clear. scary. Now let's talk about HIV and AIDS. If you want to know that I'm HIV positive, maybe you should wait for me to become an AIDS victim. You look healthy. Because I'm an HIV victim. I have HIV and I do not have AIDS. So AIDS, explain. When now someone gets to the AIDS stage, how bad is it? Like, can you tell? Are there symptoms then? Can you tell? Yeah, symptoms are, uh, symptoms and signs and symptoms help us to screen someone. Right. Uh, so that we get to know about, they are more like indicators that if we want to go for a test, maybe mm. they start with this test and this test as we go improving and improving. Right. So with uh, with AIDS, like mm. I told you, HIV is a virus. Virus, yes. It's not a disease. Yeah. So with HIV, it has a, it has medicine that does not cure, but it reduces the number yeah. and uh, it uh, and it promotes positive living. Yeah. And uh, when we talk about positive living, and uh, like I explained earlier, that when I keep on taking my medicine every time that uh, like I'm told to, yeah. uh, promoting, uh, having, uh, feeding very well. Uh, how, living a normal life, let me yeah. just say, living a normal life like yes. any other person, any HIV yeah. negative person should be. Yeah. And then, uh, then I can, uh, my HIV is manageable. I understand. So it will, I'll become an HIV, um, I'll, I'll become an AIDS victim or an AIDS patient yeah. if I stop taking my medicine. Mm. So when I stop taking my medicine, like I told you, now this virus comes stronger, Makes sense. comes yeah. back to uh, stronger. Mm -hmm. And it becomes very resistant to medicine. That okay. you keep on taking the medicine, but the HIV, the, the HIV treatment yeah. does not work on that medicine because mm. the virus that the other medicine was meant to suppress, mm. it has mutated to being a stronger uh, strain now. I'm bringing back now the strain. Yeah, I am I, already getting the point. And I think what I would like for people to understand from what we've discussed so far that just because the streets look clean mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you should walk barefooted and true right mm -hmm. because i am not going to walk around with a sign in my head that hey look i'm hiv positive no mm. i could live a healthy normal life mm -hmm. just like you mm -hmm. but when i'm not okay true. so i think what we need to emphasize is test regularly test yeah regularly whether you're in a relationship whether just test even married couples because like you said to manage yeah, yeah. So it is your responsibility mm. to always say, you know what, twice a year, I am going to go for an HIV test. At least, uh, uh, let me say thrice a year. Okay. At least every quarter. Every quarter. Mm, those are three oh, months. Wow. So we have uh, four quarters. Yeah. At least thrice. Thrice a year. Three okay. quarters of a year. Oh, no, no. But this is very important. Like, mm. I've been talking about this on my page and I have emphasized this. That look, normalized testing for HIV mm. because they are not protecting themselves. Yeah. And you won't know that I am sick. So, mm. and you don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, it's very, very important that we do that. And I keep telling from where we are. We might be a couple, but in the end, we don't want to get Mm. So like you said, binge we took a twin Havana, we have property, we have everything, but obula mo wange, obula mo wange. So you know, you have to always make sure that hey, I need to make sure I'm in check. So I really, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And um I would like to get into the next question. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is information out there on how can I stay HIV negative. Right? I know the information is there, uh use condoms, but then you'll also hear that condoms are not a hundred percent. Right? Depending on the user. For real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending on the user. There is, Explain, hey, Lori. There, there is what we call condom use. Okay. But now condom use also has its own, uh, should I say, rules and regulations. People, did you know that? Yeah. Hey. Did you know that you don't just slip it on and then shoop? It has to be consistent. I've read that. There are some lubricants you cannot use mm -hmm. when you have a condom on mm -hmm. because those lubricants, like the oil-based lubricants, they can mm -hmm. actually tear the condom. 
but now they are meant to, uh, to 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 prevent the friction. How do they tear the condom? No, no. Oil based. Uh, the lubricants are a bit different. So there is oil based. Like the sample mm. we use Vaseline, and that's not good for the condom. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but then there is some a uh, water based lubricant which is good mm-hmm. for the condom. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this is information that people need to have out there. So now when we talk about condom use, mm. we have what we call consistency. Okay. Every time you're going to have sex. Mm. When every time you're going to think of, about having unprotected sex, mm. then remember that you have to use a condom every time. That's true. And then you have to use it correctly. How? Some people actually, uh, now this is advice to girls. Yeah. I know it is, uh, by society, it is not your responsibility. You think it is not your responsibility right? uh, uh, to, uh, to wear a man, to wear a condom. Uh, I mean, for, to, uh, for you to help a man wear a condom. Okay. But it should be your responsibility. At the end of the day, I'm talking about your life. Exactly. Because it Make sure that it is on and it is where it's supposed to be. These <sighs> men, you know, some men are heartless. <laughs> I'll just pierce a condom just because, you know, yeah. we are, we're having sex in the dark. Right. And uh, you don't know. You just wait for it to enter and right. you feel like, you know. So every time you're trying to check, you're not checking at the tip. You're busy <sighs> checking here. <laughs> up, up to feel <laughs> like you... Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Because then, oh my god, then. But okay, this is serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, why are you even getting in bed with a person whose status you don't know? I think we need to go back there. Now we have to go back to testing. Exactly. Because, you no, know, the problem with us is that mm. we think, uh, uh, because lately I've started to feel like people fear pregnancy, especially girls, mm. but here in Butok, single already. Mm. Right? So they will keep going like, uh, condom is that. But here, Hillary is informing you that there is also proper condom use. Proper it could condom, sleep. Yeah. It yeah. could sleep. It could tear. It could tear. <clears throat> I might intentionally tear it. Exactly. And like then, this person we've just read in the yeah. story. He is intentionally spreading it. It might burst. Oh boy. When we are having sex. And you are at that moment <sighs> where I feel like, and this person, you know, because they are having, uh, they, are, they are in the moment. Right. They don't want to get another condom. Oh to put God. it on at that exact time so they just continue actually you're having protected but unprotected sex that's true that mm-hmm. is so true no but I, i've also i've also been uh, very keen on uh teaching people about stis mm-hmm. because i've also read that if the stis are not treated that could not bring the hiv virus i've not yeah, understood yeah, how yeah, yeah. but people don't take infections seriously i think for for, for that for, for that point mm-hmm. Uh, if HIV found that your immunity was very weak, it is mm. easier for it to penetrate. Mm. Then when it found when uh, then it found if it found uh, your immune uh, you you having a very strong immune system. Yeah. It takes time to penetrate, but of, st- of course it will still penetrate if it has to. But it is an opportunity for it if it found you with uh, opportunistic infections or right. STIs, and of which your body is very weak, so it cannot fight. It has a lot of uh, problems to fight and here comes a very stronger enemy so it's just <sighs> let me yeah. tell you i have lived with people uh with the uh with the virus and i have seen how hard it can be sometimes mm. yeah and i would like to know how you have managed that especially like how did it, how did you react when you found out you were only 12 years old. I have a friend who told me she found out when she was 16 and she nearly died. You know, the grieving stage, you know, the acceptance was hard. She, yeah, it was, it was like too much and she was also born with it. And also because I know there is stigma, like every time, if, right now if somebody said, oh, I'm HIV positive, people would immediately assume she's a whore. You know, she was sleeping around and she got it. But I want to fight and end that stigma. Number one, I don't have to look like my disease. I don't have to look like I'm HIV positive for you to, you know, stop discriminating people. Number two, not everyone who has HIV is a whore or they got it through sin. Like, people have their stories. So I want people to be very empathetic towards people who are living with HIV. And because I wanted you to share a little bit of your story of how you found out how that affected you and how hard it is for you sometimes and how you're managing it. Maybe someone out there could learn a thing or two. Uh, being a young boy that was born with HIV and I didn't know yeah. uh, at an early stage, yeah. I kept on falling sick. Yeah. Falling sick, regularly, falling sick every time, every time. So, and my and my parent or my mom, mm-hmm. uh, we've 
I've grown up with a single mom. Yeah. So they used to keep me, take me f- uh, for medication. Oh, but you didn't know. But we're not testing. Oh. So by assumption oh. that you know uh, if he has a fever, maybe it's malaria. Mm. They buy it at malaria oh, and everything. Yeah. Uh, if it is stomach, maybe it is a stomach. It is a stomach. It is a stomach ache, and you know they buy medicine for the stomach. Mm. If there is a fire in the stomach, it was a. Uh, 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 People anticipated for uh, ulcers, yeah. so until 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 my senior uh, my my P six mm. uh, for that year, I remember I felt sick a lot of times. Mm. That every time at uh, every time they used to take me home at least three times a term. But now, my mom had friends, and one of the friends uh, was a nurse. Mm. And she suggested, mm-hmm. since we've tried everything, yeah. and she was the person that was uh, helping my mom to uh, to take me to medicine for different uh, uh, medicines and every everything. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, she suggested because my mom was living abroad by then, yeah. and we are under the custody of our caretaker yes. or uh, household by then. Mm-hmm. So they suggested they take me for a, a blood test, yeah. HIV, so that they, maybe they could screen for HIV. Yeah. And that's how I reached Mount May, the hospital there at uh, Entebbe Road. Yes. And uh, they found that I was HIV. They found out that I was HIV positive. And as a young boy, twelve years, you we've, just, we've just we've just learned about HIV, mm. and uh, I do not know how to deal with HIV socially. I know. So what I have to do is take my medicine every time. Uh, so challenges grew when I started going Growing home. Up, yeah, it yeah. gets harder than I know. Yeah, so I started getting uh, self stigma. True. Because I knew whatever they were talking about HIV. Now you understood it a little bit more. But even before, even mm. in my P7, I'd fallen sick because of the side effects that came with the medicine I started mm. uh, having a very uh, uh, CD4 that was very low mm-hmm. and now i'm initiated on art treatment that is very stronger that means uh, most of uh, the diseases most of the side effects that came within that period mm-hmm. I, I had to suffer the consequence of taking medicine at that particular time mm-hmm. that I had to miss a full term of my p7 wow. uh bedridden yeah, don't be sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, uh, I know you've accepted it, and that is really amazing because mm. it helps with the like healing journey. Mm. But not so many people have accepted it. The people who are still in denial, they're like, it's no, a process. It can't be. I know. It's a process depending on who, how, they and how told, they would true. how they've gotten the news that they're HIV positive, yeah. and. Uh, inside us or inside us people we know our behavior yeah. so if i'm this person that uh, was very much careful and this at this one time i wasn't careful of course yeah. there is that sense of guilt it takes time for a person to understand fully mm. that I, I am now HIV positive and this is the life I have to live it is what mm. it is like and i have friends that i'm hoping out to also uh self discover that because okay. as a as a person that has lived with HIV and uh, I won't say, but I won't say that I'm uh, an influential person when it comes to that field. Mm. But for the people that have been with me in my journey, mm. and for those that have hoped discover and uh, also fit into the treatment, mm. uh, I always tell them, you know what, take your time. But take your time as you're taking medicine. Your medicine. Yes, do not don't the don't medicine. withdraw the medicine. Just yeah. take your uh, to realize that you're HIV yeah. positive. Everything will come. It will make its own. It will make sense. That's true. Just keep on taking medicine. Mm-hmm. Uh, have discussions. Have conversations with people that you know can be helpful in support that support system. That's yeah. very important. By the way, part of your healing journey. If you have people around you who get it mm-hmm. and who will not discriminate, and uh, man, like, that is that is key. True. And I feel like you've been blessed with that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Joe. Okay. Let's take a break. Mm-hmm. So another question that I have, mm. I've been seeing this around, uh, you know, you can take PrEP or you can take PEP. Mm-hmm. When do you take PEP and when do you take PrEP? And what is PEP and what is PrEP? When are we supposed to take either one of those? Because I've heard uh, rep victims sometimes are given. Is that PrEP or PEP? PEP. PEP. So can you tell me the difference? Yeah. Yeah. 
Also, uh, PEP mm -hmm. uh, it's an abbreviation okay. of uh, the real word is post exposure prophylaxis. Post exposure prophylaxis. Prophylaxis. Yeah. Right. So, prophylaxis is more of a prevention. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's why they take it up to rip. Because yeah. then it helps prevent in case they've been infected. Yeah. Makes sense. And uh, PrEP mm. is pre exposure. Oh. prophylaxis okay so that is before before ah. that's the difference okay pep uh, pep is more of an emergency mm, just like postina Pim. just Capitu. like postina you know <laughs> yeah. under different circumstances people have uh sex yep. unprotected sex right. maybe they're under the influence of alcohol mm. maybe at, at that particular time they do not have condoms right. uh maybe they feel like they know this person very much. Right. There is that sense of trust. Yeah. Uh, so people have different uh, reasons as to why yeah. they're exposed to sex. Right. I mean to uh, to to the virus. To the virus, yes. Yeah. Why they're exposed to the virus, mm -hmm. but still. That is not a reason for you to contract exactly, HIV. Exactly, exactly. Because even taking this medication is not a walk in the park. Yeah, back in the years we didn't have these uh, medicines. Yes. We should thank science that mm. uh, with our scientists, mm. much as we do not have the HIV cure yet, mm. but at least we are working on the prevention. That's true. And uh, the prevention is a, it's in Uganda, and it is accessible. It yeah. should be accessible for everyone that needs it. Mm -hmm. So with PEP, um, mm. we are talking about post. Now this is after sex. Okay. Uh, regardless of how, or at what, or on when, or at uh, at what point mm. you are exposed to having uh, to contracting HIV, mm. we are saying that we have a medicine called PEP. Okay. And now PEP with PEP, uh, you take it before the seventy-two hours elapse. Wow. Yeah. Here you should have started treatment. I'm not saying that you take PEP. Mm. For three days. No, when you catch it, the 72 hours, it is equivalent to three days. That's true. Mm -hmm. So with the three days, yeah. within the three days, you should have started the medication. Why? Because we are saying, we after three days, there are higher chances of the virus sticking around the white blood cells within the uh, within the, your body system. Yeah. And uh, you never know. That's true. Because once it is T, it is very hard for, for you now to treat it. I know. So we need to prevent. Right. So you go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Of course, you walk in like uh, any other person because it is free. Yeah. You you talk to, uh, I'm not saying private hospitals. Mm -hmm. You should go to uh, government-funded hospitals okay. or government health facilities. Mm -hmm. And these medicines are always there. Talk to a health worker. Tell them about, don't tell them about the story, but talk to them that uh, you see with this and this and this, I think I need PEP. Because why? You are exposed and you didn't know that maybe the person that you were sleeping with last night, mm. because of vibes, could be HIV positive. No vibe, fuck it, no vibe, fuck it, no vibe. Okay, now we have some of our man in there. I know. So I have the condom, but I need the medicine that can help me. And they will initiate. They will, of course, we have procedure. They will talk to you. We have the pre counseling. That's nice. Yeah, they will talk to you. The pre counseling, and then they test you to see. You might go there yet you contracted HIV some time back, yeah. and oh. it's just because you think last, last time night. last night. Yeah. So we have to there. be yeah we have to be very sure that you do not have HIV. My God! So we test if we find you negative at that particular time we give you the medicine, mm. but also you have to be very true to yourself. Don't mm. lie to us. That's true. Yeah, tell us the exact story that you know what I think now. The three days it up and I just got a this information. And we yeah. see how best we can help you out. Okay. But if you come claiming that you know uh, it, it is it was last night, yet you spent a week. I know. It is very hard for us to, uh, you know, we are treating something that maybe if we gave you a follow-up test for you to come back yeah. after three months, we are going to find you HIV positive and you might say that the PEP is not working. I know. Okay, that makes sense. But now for PrEP, mm. PrEP, it is given. Mm to a couple. Now here I'm going to a couple. Okay. That means 
both of you should be knowing the, your HIV status. Okay. If I'm HIV negative, it is given to a discordant couple. A discordant couple, this is a couple that once uh, they know their status, but mm. one is HIV positive and one is HIV oh. negative. So if I'm HIV positive, mm. and uh, I'll, uh, let me give an example as a man, and I have a wife or I have a girlfriend mm. that uh, you know they've committed to staying with me mm. uh, long term. Mm. And uh, we want to stay together. We want uh, to uh, to have children. We have to. Ha- we want to have great lives. Mm-hmm. But I'm not undetectable. Yeah. My viral load, viral load. This is uh, the number of the virus in, virus your, blood. in your blood. Yeah, yeah per mm-hmm. per drop mm-hmm. or per meal. So if it is undetectable, mm-hmm. that means I should be having uh, high numbers of uh, HIV virus in my body. Correct. The medicine is given to the negative partner to swallow it. To swallow. So that she does not contract. Of course. All right. And unlike PEP, because mm. PEP is given one month. Mm. One month, and you know, we take you off PEP mm. after telling you, giving you reasons that you know what, you're HIV negative, and we give you uh, the post counseling and uh, we talk about prevention, and, and you commit to yourself that you know you're going to protect yourself. Yeah. We let you be. Okay. But now with PrEP, you go with your partner in a healthy facility. Mm-hmm. You talk to your counselors. Your counselors now talk to you. Do do that? Yeah, they do. Yeah. So I have to be undetectable for a very long time for, 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 for it to be. But now for you, the HIV negative partner that is going to take the medicine. Mm-hmm. Most people uh, misunderstand this information. Mm-hmm. That I always take my medication, my mm. prep, mm. if I'm just going to have sex on that day. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that it? No. Is it every time I'm going to have sex? No. How do I take it? You have to take it every time. Every time I'm going to have sex with the infected mm. partner. Mm-hmm. So if you're having sex four times a week, I'm taking prep four times a week. No. Yeah. You're taking prep for a full month. That's what I'm saying. <sighs> You're taking okay. prep for a four month because uh, first, when when you're given prep, mm-hmm. you're told to at least take it five days before you even have unprotected sex. Wow! For for for, for the uh, for, for the body and uh, the drugs mm-hmm. to interact and get to know each other, so that you know by the time this uh, virus comes yeah. or is introduced in the body, there is enough hormone or there is enough protection for the virus to be sent back off, to be held, not to penetrate through the white blood cells. So you keep on taking it for a full month. So if you're going to have unprotected sex for six months, that means you're having PrEP for six months. So while PrEP helps prevent HIV infection prior to exposure, mm-hmm. PrEP helps treat patients who have been exposed. To, to prevent for those that to have prevent been, those that have been exposed. exposed. That is clear. I've been struggling with that one. <laughs> so thank you very much. Mm-hmm. And before we continue, I like I told you, I want to use my platform to emphasize that we can play our part to stop the HIV stigma mm. because. I'm glad, at least for you, you've accepted it and you're living a healthy life. You're happy. There are people who are still struggling. Because they are even scared of telling anybody. I have uh, someone who told me that it is only her doctor who knows that she's sick. She's afraid of telling anyone. So we need to be very, very intentional and thoughtful when we are choosing our words. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, Yeah. when we are choosing uh, how to be supportive rather than stigmatizing. I feel like that is very, very important. So our language when we are talking about HIV really, really matters. Right? And I think... I, like I was saying, I have a lot of questions for you, but uh, this is a bit personal. Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I have a girlfriend. Does she know? Yeah, she knows and you're all HIV positive. Ah, okay, okay, that makes it easier. So I think many, m- many of the people who are living with HIV are worried because every time they tell the negative, eh, either one who is HIV negative and they're like, look, we like each other, but I'm HIV positive. They run. Is there a way I can live with you 
I'm HIV negative. HIV, is there a way we can live together and I will stay safe? Especially mm -hmm. if you're undetectable. I would like for you to actually explain what undetectable means before you can help me answer that. Undetectable means it's mm -hmm. a state whereby an HIV positive person mm -hmm. has been adhering to their medicine All right. uh, by the given prescriptions by yes. the doctor. Mm -hmm. And they've reached a point where the virus does not have, it does not multiply. Like I explained earlier that yeah. if I keep on taking my medicine every time, yes. following the doctor's uh, orders right. or the prescription uh, given to me by the doctor, mm -hmm. every time I take my medicine, I'm closing gates yeah. for, uh, for for this virus to, to, produ grow. to produce right. and to grow. Yep. So I'm sending it away from my blood yeah. and uh, it is hiding somewhere, of course. Yes. Clubs hiding into sanctuaries, sanctuary mm. places now like uh, the bone marrows. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, so we uh, will Then that means my virus or oh, my body. Oh, oh, I'm not HIV negative, but mm -hmm. I'm equivalent to uh, an HIV negative person. Okay, so you still have the virus, but it's a bit sleep. Why it's dead? It's sleeping ish. Uh, 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 it's not functioning. Let mm. me use that. So that means you cannot transmit to your. Now that is undetectable, because with undetectable, we are saying undetectable equals untransmittable. Untransmittable. You, you. Uh, you I've done my you. Oh, I've done my research. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. equals you. Because okay. if I'm undetectable, yeah. uh, I do not transmit my virus to. To your partner. Yeah, because, uh, you know, mm. I'm a very good person. I, I take my medicine religiously, and uh, I I, I'm very committed at that. Yeah. And besides that, I'm also focused on on uh, on preventing right from uh, for, uh, for you to get HIV unless you get it from someone else mm -hmm. but for me I'm doing my part yeah. that is the best way I can protect you by taking mm -hmm. my medicine so we can be together you can take my medicine yeah you HIV negative, yeah. you maintain your status, I keep my status and have HIV negative or HIV free of springs, yeah. Wow. So I, I would like to stress the point that a positive HIV diagnosis is not something to take to be taken lightly. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. I think people need to also understand that, right? Mm. But with modern treatments, the diagnosis is no longer death centers. Like like you mentioned back in the day, AIDS was something that, oh my goodness, it was terrifying. I'm not saying it still isn't, but people are living with it. Yeah, people are living with HIV. But not AIDS. I still emphasize the point of AIDS. With AIDS, you have all the reasons to be. I don't. I am. Uh, quote me right. I'm not saying you should stigmatize that person. <laughs> I know. But you have all the reasons for you to be, you know, very uh, vigilant, to be very cautious about your life. Yeah. That that's with also HIV. But now, like I've said, yeah. AIDS is a uh, you know, it's that state. You remember the days where people were saying that uh, I, people could not stay with HIV for more than eight or two weeks. Yeah. They get HIV today, within two yeah, weeks, yeah. they die. Right. Yeah. So now that was the state. You mm. get HIV, it had no treatment, yeah. it was new. People uh, had refused to take medicine, thinking it is uh, witchcraft and everything. <laughs> I know. People just don't like that. I know. No, but this this is really nice. And like I said, I have so many questions, and I hope to bring you back on the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a personal level or experience, what are the things you would advise people who are HIV negative? And what uh, what piece of advice would you give someone who is HIV positive? HIV negative people. Yes. Before I want to talk about the advice, mm -hmm. I just want to level the ground. HIV positive people, these are new human beings. Sure. We are normal human beings like anyone else. Right. Uh, I'm not saying you should sympathize with us, mm -hmm. but let's, uh, let's front uh, the value of humanity. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, these are people that when you support them, it is enough treatment. We need the That's support. True. That's true. Uh, don't push us away. Mm. Uh, your negative words always uh, have a great impact when it comes to our lives. And uh, like I say, like I, like I keep on saying, it's good to distance yourself without talking. I will understand. I agree. Yeah. If yeah. you have nothing nice to say, then say nothing say at all. Nothing. And uh, let's not... For those that are using social media for you know to promote 
the negativity among the HIV positive people. Please, uh, at the end of the day, you're going to be judged as a person. We shall see your level of knowledge. We shall now also determine if, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, today is HIV negative and tomorrow you're positive. That's true. Will you come out to talk about your HIV status when you're HIV positive? And how will people uh, take you? How will they embrace the information you've given to them? So let's be nice. Let's be humble. Let's just level the ground. And let's be supportive. We mm-hmm. shall keep on giving the information to you. Sure. And uh, also for those that are HIV positive and, uh, you know, we are we, we are trying to uh, infect others. Mm-hmm. Uh, intentionally this is not nice it's not it's not nice it's better to disclose mm. if uh, if uh, if you trust the person like you say yes uh, next time i think sharifa when you're talking when when you get me back Inshallah. let's talk about disclosure because yes. it's very hard but it is the easiest way to keep yourselves as a couple or as people to to, to being hiv i think i've learned that a problem Half shared yeah, is a yeah, problem. Is a half solved, solved, yeah. yeah. Because I feel like every time you're in a safe space and you share, yeah, it is gone, and it, it's easier when you share with someone. Yeah. So it, 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 it's as opposed to you know walking around angry, scared, miserable. I, people need to understand that you are not alone. Like no matter what you think you're going through, mm. you are not alone. So it's very very important to seek out people who are going through the same exact thing you're going through. That is your support system right there. Mm-hmm. They will give you all that confidence. You need to know that, okay, if Hillary has done it, I can do it. And I feel like people fear disclosing because of the stigma. So I'm really happy that you started with the, you talked to us first, the HIV negative people. I'm glad you spoke to us first because we are the ones who are making disclosure really, really hard. Ooh. Yeah, because someone will come and tell me and I'll go like, Oh my God, I can't even share the same cup with them. I can't even touch them. I can't even hug them, you know? But at the end of the day, they're living with us in the same environment and they do not know. And you know don't know, exactly. So you see, that's even scarier. Yeah, so uh, abusing or creating names, uh, different types of uh, description about HIV positive people, it mm-hmm. does not make you feel better. No. But you're creating uh, a menace yeah, into the environment or into the community that we are living in. You never know. To die might not infect you, but in, uh, with time, because of your your words, yeah. your sister or your cousin or your auntie or what might get infected, and it gets back to you because you'll That's be true. affected. That's true. So let us promote uh, positive living. Let yeah. us be very. Uh, let us use positive language. Yeah. Let us just don't look at the status. We are human beings, just have it in mind that this is a fellow human being that I'm with. But also, test HIV is not seen by the eyes. These Please eyes, emphasize that. Because these naked eyes, you see, oh. we, always, we already have even defects within our eyes. So you cannot tell that someone is HIV positive until you test. That's true. So and please us, avoid going to clinics mm-hmm. for serious tests. Let us always go to uh, serious facilities for HIV tests. Okay. You never know. This clinic has, because uh, when, when they take off your blood, you're not there when they're using the microscope. Wow. You know, so someone is looking for money. They'll take your blood and they will estimate, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, they will assume that you're HIV negative and they will mm-hmm. just return back your results ah, HIV true. negative and what. So let us go to serious facilities to get HIV, uh, the, to get tested. And if your partners, uh, it's good to test alone, yeah. but it is healthier to test together. That's true. It is healthier to test together. Move with your partner, yeah. test, and uh, be sure of the results. And uh, and of course, the outcomes you go there expecting to be HIV negative or positive. But if you're HIV negative, please, if both of you are HIV negative, continue practicing safer sex. I'll use the word safer sex. Continue practicing safer sex. Yeah. Be honest. But also, when you're having condom use, remember that it should be correct use and also consistent. Mm-hmm. And now, for us that are HIV positive, Please, the best way to keep our partners safe is by taking our HIV medication. I see no harm in taking medication. Like these are tablets. Some of us are lucky that 
we've seen generations where people took more than six tablets. Oh my God, it was terrible. <laughs> and now with transformation mm. of science, we now take one tablet. Wow. I take one tablet a day and mm. it's okay. So continue taking your medicine. Uh, protect those around you. Yeah. Love yourself. Because no one will love you more than you do. Love That's yourself true. first. Then, uh, since we are much affected by uh, mental health outcomes, uh, because of the stigma, because of the different challenges we go through, yeah. please uh, always seek for uh, uh, support from supportive uh, people around you. Have a circle that is very supportive. Mm -hmm. I don't see reasons as to why you should keep uh, in a clique or, or in a group of people that are very unsupportive and you know they're anti-HIV. Have those for vibes, but always have constructive people, you know, that will help you come back to your senses, that will mm -hmm. always help you recover. Those people that, you know, have your side always. That's true. Yeah, so love yourself. Don't miss appointments. We shouldn't miss appointments. Let's be very good adherents. We should be very good at adhering our medicine. And also, if you get time to eat, eat healthy. Don't just eat food, but eat healthy. It is good for you to eat healthy because at the end of the day, like I said, uh, art therapy is a combination of many things and food and diet is part of it. Please, Let's do that. Hilary, I am grateful for you today. Yeah. But before I go, I personally, I would like to let everybody know. Exactly. One. One yeah. life. One life. And mm. this goes to both the people who have the virus and those who don't have. Mm. That means that if you have the virus, it's the one life you have. Mm. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Treat it's like you know it depends on it it's the only life you have mm. so like he said take your medication take care of yourself why are you going around sleeping around different people bringing new strains why are you making things worse right so if you're hiv positive you have one life mm. take care of yourself and if you're hiv negative you have one life take care of yourself i am not going to say bye-bye i will say to be continued because we are definitely coming back but hilary thank you so much thank you to assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh